And we are back. Well, come on inside and get yourself something cool to drink. <laughs> we got one. <laughs> we got one. One. Hold on. Oh, chat. We got one. We got one. We got one. I'm going to give y'all a couple of seconds to fill up in here, and then we're going to get to the proceedings this evening, not even the evening. It's, it's morning time. I hope y'all didn't have breakfast and did your hygiene in the morning, but some of y'all on the East Coast, Bleach Report do things on East Coast time, so I mean, y'all getting ready for like lunch or whatever, but it is what it is. Appreciate y'all for being here. Bleach Report tapped me on the shoulder just like this, and you know, I'm always jumping at the opportunity of Bleach Report tapping me on my shoulder and you know, tapping in with me, trying to get me to come in and do a little bit of work with him. And it was like, Vach, you know, you know, we got all 32 teams covered. We got content creators for all 32 teams, Vach. And, you know, you're one of our Cowboys correspondents here. We want you to talk about free agency so far. We're asking all of our content creators to talk about your team's moves that they've made in free agency so far okay and then you know and, and all the other 31 creators i'm sure they have plenty to talk about but i just feel that this tap on the shoulder from bleach report was a little different because we 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 only got one signed free agent <laughs> we, we, we only got one character now this was the eagles you know talking about their free agency they can fill up an entire show with the moves that they've done or if this was any other team right like any anybody that's made some big free agent moves or whether it be the dolphins losing everybody right like they're everybody got a long conversation to have but us so i kind of feel like i've been called out i feel like i've been challenged i feel like bleach report wants me to do an entire show on just Eric Kendrick, did you hear what I said? You hear what I said? You know what I mean? And I'm not one to back down from anyone's challenges. If y'all want me to talk about Eric Kendrick's for 25 minutes, oh, lordy, 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 we can talk about Eric Kendrick's for the entire 25 minutes. I put together a uh, smattering of a plate for you guys, a nice size plate, Keisha. Uh, and we uh, we got some good work. We got some film. We got some audio from uh, from a podcast that I listened to. They're a cowboy podcast, but they were talking about the Vikings. So we're going to go over some of that and then just kind of talk about some of the things that Eric Coach, Eric Culture, Eric Kendricks brings to this coach. You damn right his name, Eric Coach. I'm your name. I'm Bosch Lombardi, by the way. Hey, Bosch. <laughs> I'm Bosch. B O C H L O N B A R D I on all platforms. Tap in with me, and you can catch me on the YouTube right there at Vash Lombardi. Appreciate y'all. Now, this is what we're going to do to kind of make this relatively simple. Shouts out to my people that's working behind the scenes at Bleach Report. Okay, here is what I'm going to give you for your Bleach Report clips. And I know we got some people here now that ain't going to be here in the next 25 minutes because I know the nature of the audience. So, so we're just going to go ahead and break down real, real quick what you get with a guy like Eric Kendricks, okay? This is what the Cowboys are going to be getting. They are going to be getting a very high instinct player. And lordy, 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 we ain't had one of them in a good little minute. And if we do have him, a guy, you know, like Leighton Vander or something like that, you know, he gets hurt or he has neck issues. So we run into those problems in particular. But what we're going to get from Eric Kendricks is he's like, like if I can grade it on this, on this, on this scale or whatever, Eric Kendricks is much better than what you were getting from Damone Clark. He's much better than what you were getting from, I don't know, like if like Jabril Cox was a guy that was here and playing or something like that. And most, most, most importantly, as I get my Don DeMarco ready, he's way more better than what we were getting from like Anthony Barr or something. Don DeMarco, DeMarco. Okay. Um, so I, I don't I don't want to be hyperbolic here, right? I don't want to over exaggerate what we I mean, I'm I'm not saying this is some Oh, Eric Kendricks is gonna move the Super Bowl needle right now. I'm not saying that. Uh, I, I don't. I, I don't think he's a he's a Bobby Wagner type character. And you know, we can all just bow our heads, cry, and play Crossroads from Damn Bone Thugs. Aziz Al Shair is not in the cards for us neither. So we're not getting like a top tier linebacker prospect. But um, on the same token, Eric Eric Kendricks is an older character, and look, he fits right in that Stephen Jones type you know, type mode or whatever, where, you know, hey, he's an older player, he has pedigree, uh, and and most importantly, he's not going to, uh, he's not going to break the bank on you. Kendrick is not going to break the bank on you. Steven Jones loves that the most, okay? Uh, so we get this, this cheap player that's going to fit into Mike Zimmer's system, and he gets to be the Mike Zimmer whisperer, okay? And that's going to be very important 
for all the things that we got coming up. All right, Bleach Report, there go your three-minute clip. And for everybody that's going to leave in like 45 seconds, there's your highlighted version of what we got here, okay? Let's get into some real-life analysis. Let's kind of break this thing down uh, just a little deeper, okay? So I think what's going to be the, the biggest part, and let me just stop for a second. Let me just Let me just celebrate for a minute. Hold on. Chat, let's just celebrate for a minute. Let's all just come together and talk our talk for two seconds, and then we're going get to get into some real analysis. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Fingers on the war call button. Y'all ready? The 49ers didn't get them. Just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Oh, my God. I'm a Cowboy fan. I can't stand them characters. I don't want them to get better. No kind of way, okay? Let's get into what we get with Eric Kendricks for real, for real. Let's break this thing down a little bit more. Um, I think his biggest role is going to be like the Mike Zimmer whisper. Okay. I think he's going to come in and he's going to play for you. Most importantly, he's going to be a healthy linebacker for you. And it is, it's ridiculous. The Cowboys are in this emergency type situation where the only linebackers that we have is Damone Clark and Chad. I don't know how y'all feel on Ron Clark. Okay. You got that there. Okay. Then we got DeMarvin Overshone. That's I hate this so much. Will, you, will your ass... <laughs> and then we got DeMarvin Overshawn, right? It, you know, he's a he's a character that we had high hopes for coming out of uh, camp and preseason last year, but I have this fear of people that's coming off of ACL injuries, right? ACL injuries bother the piss out of me because we don't know what you're going to look like when you when you come back. I don't want to say ACL injury, but let's just say big injuries, right? When Dak had a big injury, it took him a while to get acclimated. When Tony Pollard had a big injury, it took him a minute. Um, you know, guys like Terrence Steele, Michael Gallup still ain't right, you know, and that's, this kind of scares me for Trey Diggs also. We ain't talking about Trey Diggs today. We're just talking about ACLs in this one particular minute. We'll talk about Trey later. So, you know, players coming off ACL made me a little nervous, and that's where the whole overshone thing kind of, you know, kind of makes me a little, you know, nervous too. I know that there's going to be a draft pick. So, at the end of the day, the middle of this defense needs help. The middle of this defense needs a leader. It needs a hero. You know what I'm talking about? And I think that Eric Kendricks is going to be the guy for that. Now, shout out to the Locked On Podcast, Marcus Mosier and Landon McCool. Uh, they're, uh, they're the homies, but they had a uh, cat named Bond. It ain't Zach Bond. It's like Brandon Bond, something like that. He's a Vikings guy. I don't know. I don't cover Vikings. Uh, but he had a lot to say about Mike Zimmer and his defense and the type of things that it takes to be great in his defense. So we're going to listen to them talk about that. I'm going to get back into this Eric Kendricks film for y'all while we listen. It took a while to get things down. And, and I don't know how familiar you are with like cover seven rules, match man, match cover seven. It's the Saban thing. It's man coverage functionally. But instead of just lining up pre-snap and saying, you take that guy, you take that guy, you have a certain amount of rules you take the third guy in but if he goes deep then you pass him off and you and it's like a set of rules it's not quite zone coverage but it's a set of rules and that's really complicated to learn uh and to get really familiar with in particular because communication is really hard in that yeah. when it's working at its best the best defense that zimmer had was in 2017 you know they go to the nfc championship that year the vikings had players that had played together for so long that not only did they know all the checks and push calls and smash calls and all the different things that can change those rules on the fly in the middle of a play, depending on what route concept you see, not only did they all know those rules, they didn't have to say a word. They all just knew everybody's job so well. And for Zimmer, he thinks that that's a worthy trade-off. He'll defend that if, if pressed about it. We ain't getting that. Hey, and that's the that's the sucky part, right? We don't have the luxury of a five year building period. We don't have the luxury of okay, Zimmer and his defensive guys have been here for three years now on this run to try to make a Super Bowl. Let's take this offense that's been together for a little bit, and then let's take this defense that all oh, we know all the checks and calls. We communicate. I know what you're gonna do. You know what you're gonna do, right? We don't have the luxury of that. Okay, what we have is all right. Zimmer's walking in day one, and nobody know what the hell's going on, Donna Marco. Don Marco. Marco. Nobody knows what the hell is going on uh, walking in day one with Mike Zimmer and his defense or whatever, right? It's, especially in our linebacker room. Can you imagine like Damone Clark or um, 
just any of these linebacks, right? Overshawn, Tyrus Weed is an edge guy, but he's going to be playing some type of linebacker, right? Or the rookie that we end up drafting, whoever that rookie may be. Uh, Edge and Cooper going to be gone. I don't even want to get my hopes up. Uh, Peyton Wilson is going to get passed along because he's hurt guy, but some team is going to do the right thing and draft him. So we may end up with like a Cedric Gray from North Carolina type guy. Uh, I don't think we're going to be in the Jeremiah Trotter Awards because he's a smaller linebacker and Cowboys don't like smaller linebackers, right? So there's really no telling um who the draft who the uh draft pick is going to be in terms of cowboy land even junior uh colson who is a bigger linebacker very athletic linebacker but he from michigan and cowboy fans ought to be sick of any player from michigan if his name ain't jordan lewis right so i don't know what linebacker is going to look like for the cowboys but no matter what that linebacker is the new addition to the linebacker whether it be a veteran the draft pick a young player that comes in or a player that we got on the team none of their asses know what to do in mike zimmer's defense right now so what we get you know, luxury wise, right? Is that Eric Kendricks, who's probably going to be green die guy, who's probably going to be the, the, the middle of that defense or whatever. Look, we can use words like leader and heartbeat and look at a guy like, well, wouldn't Michael Parsons be that guy? Michael Parsons is like, you know, the gunner, but he ain't the captain, you know what I'm saying? So Eric Kendricks gets to come in and direct the orchestra. Eric Kendricks gets to come in and, and you know, kind of do what Sean Lee used to do. Y'all remember when Sean Lee used to play? And when he was healthy, the defense was like top 10, but he'll miss three games and the whole defense. I, hold on. I, I don't want to cuss on Bleach Report, but I got to say this. But the whole defense will go to just because Sean Lee was out for a little bit. I think you're going to get a lot of that from Eric Kendricks because Eric Kendricks gets to be here and be like, hey, overshone look out for counter going that way or hey damone clark when you're rotating and not playing special teams you about to get your job took look out for screens coming on your side you know what i'm saying so if we have if we have somebody like eric eric kendricks in the middle he gets to be the orchestrator he gets to be the hey look out for this guy and he gets to be the okay communication starts here guy and if that's what we're going to get from eric kendricks then fantastic because it was many times us watching you know just watching a game where we're you know we may zoom in on linebacker or something like that or more uh more more likely to happen the broadcast booth will zoom in be like boy look at how lost damone clark look or boy, look at how little bitty, <laughs> look at how little bitty Marquise Bell is. Look, Marquise Bell was a fantastic player for us, but he was 205. He was 205. Okay. And that was one of our linebackers. Zim ain't playing that. Um, so if I could just get into the little bit of film, I've been kind of planning it in the in the background, but I just kind of want to talk about what's going on here. Um, I pulled these, uh, I actually pulled these over time here because I had been rooting for the Chargers to uh, move on from, from Kendrick's for a while. But now that he's finally moved on, I can take this film and I can I can probably give it to you. What we're seeing from Eric Kendrick's on this film, what we're seeing from him is that first and foremost, he's high IQ guy. He's high instinct guy. And there were some clips. Let me see if I can find you these clips. It ain't going to work because Bleach Report, they're not going to let me do like the whole sound thing. But, um, there were some clips going around of Eric Eric Kendricks just talking to whoever the dudes was for the network that they was talking about and him just breaking down, okay, well, the running backs were at this depth or I saw that from here or they have a tendency to do this out of, out of that formation. Let me move with me here. They have a tendency to do certain things out of this formation. So when you listen to Eric Kendricks, he's a very heads-up player. Me saying all that, I think he really makes babies in coverage. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he's going to be the cover guy to where we take him and be like, hey, run man coverage on Travis Kelsey all day. But he is going to be the player that if he is, uh, you know, like if we're in some type of zone or match zone cover seven that we just heard Buddy talking about or whatever, right? If we're in that kind of coverage, right, Kendricks is going to be the guy that I've watched so much film on you. I know how y'all goofy asses line up, and I know your your tendencies. I know what keys are real. I know, oh, you're pulling this character. Okay, well, the ball's going that way. Eric Kendricks may not be the athlete that he once was, but he will be able to pick up on, on some of these tendencies, and he'll be there early, kind of like on this play, right? Getting downhill, and what I like about him the most that we didn't – hold on, I need y'all to see my eyes when I say this. 
what we didn't get from Van Der Esch and what we definitely didn't get from Demond Clark and what we would have got from Marquise Bell, but he's 205 pounds. What we got from the, what, what we get with Eric Kendricks that we didn't get with those guys that Kendricks does really well when he's engaged with these offensive linemen, right? So you may see people try to block Kendricks, but he's really good at one, cutting angles, but two, once he's engaged with these guys, he's telling them to get their goofy hands off of him with this trash attempted block that you attempting to block on me. And then the next thing you know, he's going to go make the play. So like I said, man, Kendricks is a dude that he's going to be smart guy, but he makes everybody around him smarter. Let me tell you something, man. Kenny Murray, the other linebacker for the um, Chargers, Kenny Murray isn't a notoriously high IQ football guy. This ain't me calling him slow. Okay, but he's not notorious as a high IQ football guy. And this going back to when he was playing in college, we evaluated him when he was in Oklahoma. I believe he was Oklahoma. That draft was a was a while ago. And then just watching Chargers film in general, Kenny Murray isn't necessarily the high IQ see it run there linebacker type guy. But when Eric Kendricks is your linebacker, then it bumps up his IQ a little bit, right? Kind of like an RPGs or like these little, you know. You know these little anime video games, whatever, right? If if I'm if I'm in the party and I'm the smart guy, I make the whole party smart. It just is what it is. That's just that's just how life works. So, and this is him terrorizing our little our little goofy tight ends, <laughs> our little goofy tight ends, not not even being able to see him, and he's just working downhill, just dodging dodging blockers, dodging puller Tyler Tyler Smith and Sean McEwen pulling right. He's just dodging them, getting down on Tony man. He was he was a savage in the um in the run game. And you know, if you go look at his numbers, we just talking about numbers, stats, tackling. He played 15 games last year, but last year was his third most tackle total. His third most tackle total, like hundred and I'm sure I could Google it. <laughs> I'm sure I could Google. It. Give me give me two seconds. Give me two seconds. Kendrick. I like game logs because it's Timmy. Scroll up two times. All right. Eric Kendricks had 117 tackles. Uh, let's see, 79 solos, three and a half sacks, which he's really a, a solid pass rusher player, like going, going, going forward. Like, you know, they didn't blitz him a whole bunch, but when they did blitz him, he was able to kind of deal with. He was he was uh he was able to deal with these offensive linemen and, and you know just kind of like we talked about earlier, really get hands off of them, right? Now I don't I don't think this is gonna be like a Dan Quinn situation where oh we got Eric Kendricks playing edge <laughs> and he's gonna be blitzing full time. You know what I mean? He, Eric Kendricks is an A gap with his hands in the dirt. I don't think it's gonna be a situation like that. I actually got some film of him pass rushing on this pass rush play right here. Boom, boom, boom. He was a, a three and a half sack guy. I wish I can move the chat and move me just so y'all kind of see on the right side of the screen here. But, you know, he's a guy that can come down the line of scrimmage and engage with an offensive lineman and like survive. But they just didn't use him like that a whole bunch. I just I guess Brandon Staley just didn't kind of put that in his ministry or whatever. But um, he got he got three and a half sacks for the handful of times that he that he did rush. Um, so hey, that could be a thing that he does move forward. But yeah, three and a half sacks. Uh, but stuffs, run game stuffs. He had nine of them, and we we always talk about this. How can we make the run game better? How can we? Uh, you know, we we're already like a a defense that once we force you to start passing the football, then we became elite because we got great pass rushers. Or Dorrance and Dante going now, so we're gonna see what the uh what the next crop of pass rushes look like. Uh, but we have pass rushers and we have cornerbacks that go get picks so the the common thought is if we can get you into these passing downs we can get you out of the the running stuff then we can force you to get sacked or make interceptions the problem is when we run into teams like san francisco we run into teams like buffalo or you know miami we did solid in miami but we couldn't finish or uh the the dreaded green bay game right like what happens when a team can run the football successfully when they can run the football and do whatever the hell they want, does moving us around on the line of scrimmage. Somebody, somebody uh, tagged me yesterday, Twitter machine. There was a Dolphins fan or something. I was like, Vach, you got a scouting report on, on Neville Gallimore. Is he a good player? And I was just like, it's false. No way. Not this time. We created it. Not this time. No, not this time. It's totally made up. Pure fiction. 
it's fiction. Boy, we did a big ass dance when we realized Nova Galmore would you know what I'm saying? He wasn't coming back. Get him up out of here. So so yeah, I this 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 definitely will help your run game because you have a linebacker that nine stuffs is 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 nice for a linebacker. And now just imagine if we have a have a better D line or just a better defensive plan in general. Those numbers may go up for Eric Kendricks, right? Uh, Hankins is still a free agent. Chat, let's just keep it a buck here. Nothing's guaranteed here. Jonathan Hankins is still a free agent. That ain't signed up yet. That ain't that ain't signed, sealed, delivered yet. Mozzie Smith is still 290 some pounds. Also, Digazoo is still a stud, right? But we still have our challenges that we're going to have to overcome on the D line. And I'm sure that when we get in the draft world, we're going to. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna find somebody to come in and play D line and one tech for us. But um, in my in my mind, as long as Eric Kendricks is relatively clean to run around or whatever, like I said, not the best athlete, but as long as he's relatively clean enough to run around a little bit, I think he should be good to go. Okay, relatively. Hey man, I appreciate all y'all for being here, man. We uh we still got some work to do. This ain't me rapping short now like that. I'm just uh I'm just appreciating y'all for coming in. Uh, you know, tapping in with me, all oh, y'all in the chat room. Who up in here? Who who in the room? Who who in the, who in the chat room? Wait a oh my God, we're fussing about Dak Prescott. How do we get here? We talking about Eric Kendrick. But I appreciate y'all that's in the chat right now. I'm gonna do some Q and A at the end of this. Uh, so if y'all wanna hang around, appreciate y'all. Salute, salute. Um, but yeah, we'll see. So. Yeah, Kendrick is going to come in and be Green Dot guy. Uh, he's going to be the Zimmer Whisper, and 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 hopefully there's not a there's there's not a huge learning curve, right? <clears throat> because Zim Zim's cover seven is is um it's only difficult if you've never run cover seven before, and cover seven is is, is much more than like, you know, some people are just write oh it's it's, it's like man zone. Well, it ain't man zone because that'll make it sound like a zone bliss type of deal. Cover seven is like it's like all right, we're in a we're we're man covering whoever's in our zone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we'll pass you along at at some point, but once everything gets determined post snap, all right, that's when we figure out who the hell that we're going to be running with. They've been doing this in in Bama for years, and I saw uh, I was watching film on the University of Missouri this year. They they do a bunch of you know uh, match and cover seven and you know all that all that stuff. Right? Why that's important here is because I know. Let me just get my war card ready when I do this. So Eric Kendricks can be able to be the anchor of it from the linebacker position. The D linemen are fine, but. One, Trey Diggs played at Alabama, so he did a bunch of this. Then Gilmore did this in New England. Mm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So if, if 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 we're in this situation, you know, like my man's from the clip I played earlier, I don't know how many of y'all were here when I played it. I don't know if I should just play it again because it's kind of a long clip, but whatever. Uh, but Cover seven or 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 just all the different concepts that Zimmer likes to run. It's a learning curve involved. I will we'll, 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 cool, cool, cool. we'll do it again. We'll do it again. We'll we'll just play this just a little bit of it one more time just to make my point. Because I know some of y'all brand new up in here. Let me just run this. Down. And and I don't know how familiar you are with like cover seven rules, match man match cover seven. It's the Saban thing, it's man coverage functionally, but instead of just lining up pre-snap and saying you take that guy, you take that guy, you have a certain amount of rules you take the third guy in but if he goes deep then you pass him off and you and it's like a set of rules it's not quite zone covered but it's-, it's a set of rules it's not quite zone i don't want to play the old clip again because some of y'all was here some of y'all weren't but my whole my whole point is is that once that that defense is figured out like once it's you know it's here and it's implemented and we're all good with it it could be a top tier defense for you just by the nature of what it is like just scheme wise it's a top tier defense that can give offensive problems. Not just offensive problems, but it's notorious for giving the the um, Shanahan dudes problems. That's why it's most important, right? Because I don't really care about beating offenses. Let me get my button ready. I don't care about beating offenses in particular. We need to beat the Shanahan dudes. Did you hear what I said? You know what I said. We need to beat the Shanahan dudes, right? So you know the 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 Rams. The 49ers, 
You know what I'm saying? Uh, we we're playing the the Texans this year. You know what I'm saying? Like those those dudes and those systems or whatever. We have to get better with with beating those guys. I don't know if we play the Dolphins again, but we got to get better with beating those guys. And this Zimmer defense schematically is notorious for beating those guys. We just got to get on page. I think our corners will be fine. I think um, our linebackers will be fine because Kendricks will be the orchestrator of that. I don't know what's going to happen at safety, though. And safety is going to be a, a weird conversation to have anyway um, because Donovan Wilson exists as kind of like your box safety, but he's not a traditional deep, strong safety. I don't think Marquise Bell is neither because he just played linebacker for a couple of games. I think Malik Hooker would be fine because all you got to do is do Malik Hooker things, but I don't think we have a traditional deep, strong safety. Because I just know J. Ron Kerr is about to be a watch the football wizard in no time. So, if anything, safety may be a bit of a learning curve. But if we can get safety caught up, because I just, I just, I just think what Kendricks brings to the table, I think linebacker would be fine. If we can figure safety out, then th- there won't be very much of a learning curve for most of the guys on defense, and the D line will be fine. They, they, they're, they're going to know their job. Gunther, Gunther going to have them right. Okay. Y'all got any questions, chat? Y'all got any questions, chat? Because if y'all ain't got no questions, we're going to get back. Bleach Report challenged me to a duel to talk about one player for 25 minutes. And, I mean, y'all know me. Uh, we already missed our chance in the running back market. Jones did nothing. Jones just did nothing for the first few days. Hey, man, I think it's going to be Ronald Jones is going to be Deuce, and it's going to be draft pick and Hunter Lippy. I'm cool with that. What's up, Duke? Uh, Lamar put the whole offense on his back all year, though. Dak does not own the field like Mahomes or Lamar Jackson. I tell you what, if you was a Cowboy fan and you had Jackson on on your team, you'd be sick of him too because he ain't taking you to the promised lands that you want to be to. So I'm sure Cowboy fans hate him too. Hey, Vosh, I think Kendricks is washed. What you think? Well, I don't think Kendricks is washed. I think Kendricks is not what he once was. But like I said, when I when I when I first when I first hit go on the live stream, um, just on a scale, he's much better. Let me go on this rise. He's much better than Eric Kendricks, Damone Clark, you know, the guys. It, anybody that would have played linebacker for you last year, he's much better than those guys. He's just simply not Al Shair. He's not – I don't even want to – because Devin White ain't, ain't as good as, as people think he is. I, I can say the same thing about Patrick Queen too. But Kendricks just bring a different set of skills to the table. He brings a different set of skills to the table. And if anything, I want smart linebackers that's not going to get misdirected. I want smart linebackers that's not going to get misdirected. I could have had an athlete at linebacker and you bring him in and, you know, this is this my, this is my thing about Patrick Queen, right? Patrick Queen may be a better linebacker than Eric Kendricks in terms of athleticism. But Patrick Queen is the guy that leaned on Roquan Smith. You see what I'm saying? And Patrick Queen had a fantastic year. One, because Mike McDonald had a, had a fantastic scheme. But Patrick Queen leaned on Roquan a bunch. Eric Kendricks, I'm not saying he's Roquan in terms of overall skill because Roquan is still a top-tier athlete. But I'm talking about from the, the, the brains of the operation. Roquan would be like counter. So him and Eric Kendricks would just run to the counter. I mean, him and... Patrick Queen would just run to the counter. What I'm saying is, if you got Ed, if you got Eric Kendricks, and let's just say Michael Parsons is next to him, or Overshone is next to him, or Damone Clark when he's now on the bench and playing, you know, kickoff or something, he's next to him, right? Eric Kendricks, what he brings to the table is, hey, Michael Parsons, they're running a sweep that way. I may not get there first, and you may run past me trying to get there. But get there, and when you get there, hold on to him because I'm going to be the second guy there because you fastened me. I think that's what Eric Kendricks brings to the table. Uh, he ups Michael Parsons' processing level. And if you can make Michael Parsons a faster processor, then holy moly, donut shot. What about the wide receiver position, Mike Williams? Hey, I'll tell you what, I said this earlier. I'm tired of people with the tore up ACL. They made me a little nervous, and, you know, Mike Williams coming off the torn ACL, and I don't think he's going to be cheap, so. You know how that go. Um, hey, Vash, what do you think about A.D. Mitchell in the draft with the 24th pick? Let me tell you what I like about A.D. Mitchell and this draft class in particular. I honestly think, and we don't have a fourth-round pick or nothing like that, but I honestly think that in this draft there are players that you can use. Like, you can you can find a 
Hold on. I got y'all. I got y'all. Just in case y'all don't know, you know, who Vach is and how Vach gets down, I like to put film on the screen while I'm talking. You know what I'm saying? So when, you know, when I have an opinion on the player, I don't want y'all to think I'm just blowing smoke up y'all's rear. You know what I'm talking about? But AD Mitchell, you know, he may or may not be there at 24. I'm not sure. But if he is, though, hey, hey, he's a he's a he's a character that catches everything. Strong over the middle. He's a little he's a little faster than what I thought. If you go back and watch his film last year from 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 George, you can kind of see that speed a little more. Um, so you'll go, dang man, why why was he like a like a like a track star maniac in Georgia, but he's more of a like possession receiver in Texas? Well, if you just watch his film, you know he's a uh, he's he's great at changing tempos and things like that. So as far as AD Mitchell goes. I got to make sure I'm not playing in the ACC film because Bleach Report can't have it. So as far as a a AD Mitchell goes, hey, playmaker catches everything, big body dude over the middle. If you pair him with CD Lamb, it works. And Brandon Cooks, you 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 just pair him along with those guys, it works. Um, and I think he can come in and be a true X receiver for you. But like I was saying though, I think way in the in the in the third round, fourth round, I think you can get somebody that can come in and be better than Jalen Tober right now. Jalen Tober, Kevontae Turbin, Jalen Brooks. I think you can find somebody in the third round right now that's better than those guys. And I'm sorry, pardon me. <laughs> I just, I just, I just, I just think, I just think it happens. Um, somebody says, should should we cut, <laughs> should we cut Michael Gallup and LVE? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should probably cut Michael Gallup and LVE. You know, you know, you should probably go ahead and move on from those characters, all right? Uh, let me ask. Let me answer a few more questions. Then we're gonna get up out of here. Draft Franklin or Rice at wide receiver? I'd rather draft Rice because I know Rice is gonna be a character you can get in day two or day three, so that value adds up a little bit. I think Troy Franklin is vastly overrated. I think he's a cool player, uh, but I think he's a little overrated. So you would have to draft Troy in the twenties and thirties, and I think that's a little high for him. So I'm taking, I'm taking Jerry Rice on. I'd rather have Keon Coleman at 24. If if the offensive line stuff has pardon the sun, just oh, if if uh if the if the wide receiver pardon me if the offensive line options, particularly center and tackle, if they've run out, um, I like I like Keon Coleman, but I think Keon Coleman to be there in day two somewhere. I don't think he's overrated. Uh, thoughts on 105.3 fan get lit up yesterday? I don't want to get them dudes anymore. Hey, we on we on Bleach Report, dog. We ain't gonna talk about other news entities. Why we on Bleach Report? Draft uh, Braylon Allen in round three. I like Braylon Allen. He's a he's another he's another fun player. He's he's another fun player, power player. I think he loses his his balance sometimes, but um, you know, I, I don't I don't want to be lazy and just compare him. Hey, I, I got some Braylon Allen film. Is, is Braylon Allen ACC? No, Braylon is Big Ten. Yeah, okay, cool. We can we can do that. We can do that. Bam, bam, bam. So Braylon Allen. No, that's still AD Mitchell. There's Braylon Allen. Uh Braylon Allen, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be lazy and say just because he's a he's a big running back that he's like a Derrick Henry type dude. I, I think that's lazy analysis. I think Braylon Allen is more of a James Conner type character. He got a little more movement to him. Um, just a little more burst and wiggle, and he can he can um he can um catch the ball a little better. So I mean, look, the, the, the world is your oyster at running back because you're not getting one in free agency. So I don't think Braylon is going to be there in the third round neither. I think these running backs are going to go because of the running back market, like 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 the league's running back market. Um, those dudes ran out fast yesterday, but they were top-tier players. You know, Saquon's a top-tier player. You know, DeAndre Swift, relatively what you think about running back, is a top-tier player. So I think everybody that didn't get a big free agent running back or whatever, uh, yesterday or the past couple of weeks or whatever, I think they're gonna have to go run it back early because the free agent options are gone. So you either gonna get a running back in round two or round three, and if not, you you probably gonna have to wait and get one of those like round five or so guys. But you know, we'll see. Chat, y'all got any other questions before I get up out of here and go to the range? If I still learn how to talk, yeah, sometimes you know how I go. <laughs> you know how I go. What do you think about the Cowboys going to do in the run back position? Draft. They're going to they're gonna draft, pair that dude with Deuce, pair that dude with Hunter Lipkin, pair that dude with some old character like Ronald Jones for $38. Uh, I'm going to draft my ex as an inside linebacker. She's tough. Hey, man. I'm not getting fired from Bleach Report, but I got some thoughts. <laughs> I had a joke for you, but I don't want to get fired from Bleach. I just got it. Uh, O-line. I think the O-line 
like drafting the O line, you know, is, I think you should draft O line every single year. Um, but I think center is a position that you should be looking for. But I don't want to just reach for center if it ain't there. Like if Jackson Powers Johnson and Graham Barton from Duke, if they aren't there, then I'm I'm probably waiting. I'm probably waiting. Like Zach Frazier at 24 is a little high, but if you get down to the second and third rounds, you know, guys like Bo Lemmer, guys like um Cedric Van Prant, those dudes can play too. I also think like dudes like like Cooper BB, like his his big ass can definitely learn how to snap and play center. So um there's 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 center options. There's center options, but there's some offensive tackle options too. But just like offensive tackle, right? I'm not pressed if I can't, you know, like if um if I don't get or Marius Mims earlier. If I don't get um, JC Latham ain't gonna be there, but like, okay, so Mims, I, I'm not big on Tyler Guy like everybody else, but if but if Mims is not there, I'm not just rushing to get the next left tackle. Like Jordan Morgan is my last tackle that I would go um, that I would go early, but just because I don't get him doesn't mean okay, I got to get Kingsley Sewell Matea now. Nah, I'll just move on because I need my linebacker and I need my running back. So we'll see. Jordan Morgan definitely going to be there. Chad, y'all got any other questions before I go? Y'all can ask me whatever you want. This is your show. I know Bleach Report brought me here to talk about free agency for 25 minutes, and I did. I talked about that. I talked about one player for 25 minutes. Did you hear what I said? You hear what I said? You know what I'm saying? But we can, we can talk about whatever you want to talk about. Sign Hunter Renfro? Sure. I think a route runner would be, um, would be, would be fantastic for that. And I don't think we're done in free agency. Shouts out to Blackbird. I don't think we're done in, in free agency because I don't think we started free agency yet. We just starting late. <sighs> we just starting late. Uh, thoughts on 105.3 The Fan? Nope. But shouts out to Brian Broad. Some friends with him. If uh, Me and him go live every Friday on my show on YouTube. Vash Lombardi on YouTube. Me and Brian Broad talk draft every Friday. So tap in. Signed DJ Reader. Hell yeah. We was watching film on DJ Reader throughout the season. And shit, Connor Wick, not Connor Williams, um, not Connor McGovern either. Tyler Smith, I'm um, Tyler Biotis. Tyler Smith blocked everybody. Tyler Biotis couldn't block him. Tyler Biotis did, didn't didn't block him. And you know, I don't want to call anybody casuals here, but as I was as I try to break down things on my show on YouTube every week, I try to tell people, man, hey man, DJ Reader ain't no scrub. Just because you don't know him, don't mean he's a scrub. DJ Reader was beating the hell out of Tyler, uh Tyler Biotis. Beating the hell out of Tyler Biotis, but I, it's up to y'all. It's up to y'all. I'm just giving Bleach Report a little more content. If they want to uh, take some clips and do something with them, they can do whatever y'all want. Shouts out to whoever behind the scenes at Bleach Report. I'm sure y'all are y'all are fantastic there. Appreciate y'all. Um, O-line free agency, depth is weak. So we, I actually don't disagree. I actually don't agree that O-line free agency is weak because a lot of offensive tackles are on the board still. A lot of offensive tackles on the board still. So um, interior guys have come off the board quickly, but you can you can go find a tackle right now. You 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 got to jump on it right now. They on sale right now. <laughs> they flying off the sh- they they gonna be flying off the shelf soon. But you know, you'll see. How you feel about Boston College BC from his Blake Horam Blake Horam the running back from Blake Horam. Um, I think he's a good player. I think he's a good player. I'm confused. Not even, not confused. I'm just not sure about how he'll be in the pros. Um, he runs with a lot of power in college. I don't know if that's going to translate. Very, like he's not, he's not a big dude. Like he's swole. He kind of thick. Um, but he's not like a. I'm sorry about all of a sudden. He he's uh, but he's a smaller runner. So I don't know if that power is going to translate to the lead. But um, he is shifty. He's a quicker cut on a dime type player in college. I just don't know if that's going to fully translate to the league like if you look at a guy like like marshawn lloyd or um jalen wright like those guys is their quickness translates their speed is going to translate you know you look at um audrick um estime or braylon allen like their power is going to translate to the league like ray davis like his power and speed are, are going to translate to the league blake horn was good in college but i don't know if that's going to translate into the league because he's so little bitty so we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see um, Big Mix 31 says, hit the follow button, fellas. This is the real deal. Appreciate you, sir. Look, Bleach Report comments are, are ruthless, are ruthless, and they always like, who the hell is this on the screen? Like, they'll click and be like, why should we listen to you? I'm like, hey, man, I'm legit. <laughs> I'm legit. We're we chilling. Relax. Relax, man, but appreciate you, though. Hit the follow button and uh, tap in with me whenever I go live. I'll be... When the next time I go live, let's see, let's see. 
I go live on the 17th. That's a Sunday. A Sunday. Okay. Yeah, tap in with me. I'll be here. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Any other questions before I get up out of here? What's your record prediction for the Cowboys? We're going to beat the hell out of all the bad teams. We're going to have a good fight with the middling teams, but we're going to get smoked by all the good ones. That's my that's my damn prediction until I get proven otherwise. Cowboys got to show me. They got to show me. Uh, let's see. We're not doing a show later, but we might drop some film on the YouTube. We'll see. Resign Gilmore. Yes, I think we should resign Gilmore. And I was thinking maybe, maybe not because he's an older player. But at the end of the season, when Deron Bland started to get picked on, Gilmore was your best corner. Stefan Gilmore and Jordan Lewis took turns back and forth for like six, seven weeks being your your best corner. After Deron Bland broke the record on the Washington football wizards, they started throwing at him. <laughs> they started throwing the ball right at Deron Bland. And Jordan Lewis and Gilmore had to come in and, and be your savior. So uh, I'm sorry about that. They had to come in and and you know be your savior. So so yeah, Gil, Gilmore's old, but she, he was older last year. I'll give him one more shot at it. I'll give him one more shot at it. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Jonathan Brooks from Texas. Thoughts? I think Jonathan Brooks is fantastic, but he's coming off injury. He's coming off injury. Gilmore probably having like a like a shoulder surgery or something like that. Possibly something like that. Shoulder surgery. Um, I think that's all I got for y'all. Just in case y'all coming in late, I just want to run this Eric Kendricks film one more time just so y'all get a little view because I know some of y'all got here late. Uh, some of y'all, you know, wasn't, wasn't here a little early, you know, which is saying things being late. I, I, I'm sorry, I apologize, but yeah, Eric, Eric Kendricks, solid player, solid player. He's a very, IQ, he's, he's a high IQ player. He knows Zimmer's system right now. He's going to be able to come in and teach everybody else Zimmer's system and his nomenclature and all the calls and checks and things of that nature. I think Trey Diggs is going to be fine because he played in Alabama. I think Gilmore is going to be fine with this system because he played in, um, in New England. Um, Deron Bland is going to have to be all right. He, he's going to have to figure it out. And our D linemen, they're going to be fine. They they're going to have to um, they're going to have to be stout versus the run. But I think Zimmer and Gunther are going to fix that. I think as long as Eric Kendrick gets gets to run clean and let's not get comfortable because Hankins is a free agent still. Mozzie is two hundred ninety pounds still, and Neville Gallimore ain't good, but he just got signed to the to the Dolphins, so we still have to be careful there with our D line help. But as long as Eric Kendricks is clean, then he can be a guy that not only makes plays with his IQ, but he can be like, Hey, Michael Parsons, go run over there. Hey, Damon Clark, go run over there. Hey, Marquise Bell, go run over there. And I think that's, what's going to be, um, that's, what's going to be the most beneficial. What about Bakhtiari joining us? Fantastic. Anything that keeps Tyler Smith at guard chase young, nah, chase young, was lazy in the Super Bowl. So I don't want a person that's going to be lazy in the Super Bowl. That means he's going to be lazy in week seven. <laughs> so now nah, I, don't, I don't know if I'm up there with Chase Young just yet. Um, All right. That's all I got for y'all. Appreciate y'all. Lay y'all to pieces, man. We'll be back uh, to do this again. Uh, like I said, follow me on my Flash Lombardi tab situation or whatnot. I'm going to be in the Cowboy tab. I'm going to be in the NFL tab. Uh, Bleach Report, quit playing to put me over in the uh, draft tab so I can give y'all some more fire, fire um, philosophies and you know, long form videos and all that. Uh, tap in with me there. And I'm on YouTube, Vash Lombardi, V O C H L O N B A R D I, where I do much more film work and I break down what we're doing is on the get down. And I, I I do a lot of drafts, like I, like I just said. So if y'all want to follow me on the draft, tap in with me. Okay. Um, y'all hold it down. I'll catch y'all next time. Like I said, like I said, hold on. Boom, boom, boom. We have one free agent in the books. I've been wanting to do this the whole show, so pardon me. We got one free agent in the books. He's a linebacker. And we've been needing it. We got a long way to go. But at the end of the day, I think we'll be just fine. We gonna be all right. Y'all hold it down, man. Peace.